What's up, YouTube? Welcome to our Through Garage, and as you can see, we're going to be putting this valve body together along with this conductor plate for my transmission that had apparently had broke. Uh, as you can see, this is the old conductor plate. Uh, this RPM sensor was cracked right here, which put my Mercedes in a home lint mode. Let me give y'all a closer look. Yeah, right here. So I just been uh, waiting for stuff like this. We got uh, some automatic transmission fluid, which is the ATF 134. And uh, also we got a new belt because my other belt went shredded. And hopefully we got the right, you know, uh, Transgo uh, shift kit. Uh, the one I ordered from Amazon was completely wrong and I'm sending that part back in a bit. Don't know, probably tonight or whenever. Also went and got these little stuff right here for the valve body. It's actually little goodies and all that. And also we got new bolts, as you can see. And let's just put this bad boy together. And I'm probably going to end up looking at legit street cars because um, just to go golf reference and all that. But other than that, it's not rocket science. It's pretty easy. So, yeah. So guys, first thing first, we're gonna work on this lower body. As you can see, I'm looking at these instructions right now. We going to exempt this step right here because right here we can see our spring. So ain't no point of doing it. Say if you uh, see the spring through this opening, no need to take apart. The only thing we are gonna have to do is just put this new red spring uh, right here with a, a two and three shift press. And then we need to put a new overlap uh, bushing, uh, which is on the other side. So spring about right here and then overlap bushing on that side. And this is the Transgo kit right here. These are all our little parts they sent. And we're just going to use, I think this is the red spring right here. And then our bushings right here. So let's get to it. All right, guys, we're changing the red springs out. Take this piece out. Real easy, make sure y'all be careful. As you can see. So we're gonna be changing this spring right here. Uh, can I compare it to the other one? Yeah. Look much smaller. Uh, look, looks very smaller. But let's just change that out. Alright guys, we got a new red spring in. Just the old one. They said these usually be broke. I mean, you probably had to change it, but I did, so yeah. Okay, guys, so like I said, we're replacing this bush right here. We're gonna remove these plate. I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine screws on the back side. So uh, let's get her off. Okay, guys, so it looks like it's this sleeve right here. So guys, this is our sleeve right here, the one or two to three to four uh, shift. No, I think, no, it's the one or two to 45 shift. As you can see, it looked pretty worn out. So for this Transgo kit, uh, it says no dot ID on the bushing. I will show y'all that in a bit. I want to use these uh, Sonex uh, bushings, but we're going to have, we would have to bore out um, the hole just a little bit more. So I'm going to just stick with the Transgo and uh, just go from there. But to identify, uh, as you can see, it's a small little dot right there. That's one. And then the other one, two dots, as you can see, two dots. But we're just going to be using one with no dot, which I just had, which I think is right here. This the one right here. So let's slap this one in and call it a day. All right, so guys, we got our lower body done. The uh, only thing we had did was just replace uh, the sleeve and a spring on a, one side of the other. And I also had to make sure all the balls was uh, in place. Uh, made sure nothing was in the wrong passage and all that because that wouldn't be a good day. So I had to make sure and recheck that everything was in the correct position. So right now I'm going to put this plate right here that I just cleaned on top of here. And then we're just going from there. So let's get to it. Got plate on. <laughs> All 
All right, guys, now we're working on the upper uh, body. Um, as you can see, we're going to use that two dot with the two dots. Uh, we're going to replace just the sleeve on this side uh, right here. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this side. So uh, let's get the dot two sleeve on this side right here. So guys, as you can see, this is the older sleeve right here. We just got to pull it out right now. Should have came out easily. This the other one. So let's put in the dot two. And we're gonna zip her up, uh, 40 inch uh, pound of uh, torque, and move on to the front. All right, guys, we're on the last part before we put on a conductor plate on top. Uh, as you can see, we are right down here. And what we're gonna be adding is this new set right here. And also this new uh, PRV valve right here. And we're gonna just add a bushing. So we got all three of the components right here and that will tie everything up uh, on this bad boy here. Uh, next thing, we're gonna just put this conductor plate on. And I think that's pretty much gonna be it. I could throw this in the car. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm gonna clear codes, gonna change the belt. So I wanna actually get this run tonight, uh, test drive it, and then just go from there. So guys, we got everything changed over. And man, the only thing we have to do is just put this plate on and let's continue. So guys, we got the valve body in. It was pretty hectic, but we got it. We torqued it down to 71 inch pounds. All screws, I made sure that was every last screw. And uh, now we're just trying to tighten up this connector right here and just put it back in, uh, put the new pan gasket on, put the pan back in, put everything back in, um, put the, probably clear the codes first, then put the fluids in, and then just like see if it would change, uh, you know, from part to drive with ease uh, without any issues. So let's see. So guys, last thing, is the pan gasket we're gonna border up and then we're gonna put some fluid in uh clear the code and then just go from there So guys, we got the battery plugged in. Remove the key. Okay, let me remove it. All right. I'm gonna take this car out, drive it and all. If everything goes smooth, I'm gonna clean her out and everything. So I'm ready to do that. We got a computer. Upgrade mode. I'm go back. Oh, let's clear these codes, man. So guys, we done linked with the car. So right now I'm gonna just erase these codes. Make sure ignition on with the engine off. Press enter to continue. Good investment right here. Gonna save me down the road. 
And let's see. You don't let's read any codes just in case. No fault codes. As y'all can see, we are clear. Whew. All right. Uh, I wonder if it, what is live data? I don't know. Uh, So guys, right now I'm filling up this uh, trans fluid, then I'm gonna end up changing up the belt. As you can see, it's torn, to be honest. So, yeah, we got some good ATF 134, which is good for this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So guys, we got the car on all fours. There's a slight five bottles in here. So I'm finna go get this dipstick that I had got from um, Amazon um, and go from there. And I know once we get this car back together, I'm probably gonna end up breaking it back down again, but I thought I'd you know, go out riding and all that little good stuff. Then um, end up doing these gaskets just in case. Um, just to be extra cautious, might end up changing the alternative, just to be conscious and all that. So, yeah, got to change this belt still. Didn't do that yet. <laughs> oh. Let's just start her up. Just had a transmission uh, running and all that. So guys, after changing every damn thing, um, only thing to point to is this gear selector and all that, honestly, which is really weird. And that smoke is coming from uh, some of the fluid I got on the tailpipe, so it ain't nothing too crazy. I ain't had no leaks underneath. Um, it's still doing the same thing even after clearing the code. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna recheck the codes one more time again. And if it tends to be this bad boy here, then, well, we we'll want to see what we can do. I mean, we did everything else. Good thing, you know, we changed the fluid, the filter, a uh, new throttle. I mean, a new conductor plate, which was needed anyway. So, yeah. And I'm just want to put everything back together in this car, like that little piece right there. I'm just want to get this car cleaned up. But we can't. So, um... We'll just figure out one more time. So guys, what we getting, uh, one code we getting is uh, transmission range sensor A circuit P R N D L input. So um, that's code P. Let me see what code it is. P zero seven zero five. So I'm probably gonna end up doing research on that. But other codes didn't even come up. Um. Other codes did not come up. No, just the only one. So guys, what's up? I'm in my work van, as you can see, chilling right now. Just got done with a little job. Uh, about this issue, man, uh, this Mercedes has been throwing me in for a loop and some other people that I have been, uh, you know, asking questions about and all that. Uh, so the common issues with these uh, cars, I mean, 
the whole lineup uh, are the conductor plate itself with the RPM uh, sensor uh, being cracked as you can see it was cracked uh, also the TCM itself uh, the gear selector which you put in part neutral drive you can change the gears and all that good little stuff um, but we still getting the same issue. We changed the conductor plate. We got new fresh fluid, new fill too. We got everything. Everything's topped off. And we still having the same cold, same issue, which is the P0705. And that's, you know, you've seen the cold. So my concern is possibly that gear selector. And I ended up buying a new one uh, from eBay for $347. So that's going to be in by February. So once we change that out, Hopefully that solved our issue because I looked at other videos and I seen this one particular guy. He changed his, but he got his from like a junkyard and all that. And his uh, P drive and all that was showing in the gauge cluster. Mind you, mine do not show in the gauge cluster, which is kind of weird. So it's at, it don't know what gear it's in or it's supposed to be in. That's what it's telling me and all that. Um, So I'm just ready to get this car on the road, man. I thought. I was going to be able to drive it, clean it up and all that, but I can't. So um, I was going to go on like a little long road trip too, but apparently I can't right now. So we're just going to have to wait till that come in. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm missing the Mercedes. I really am. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate, you know, things like this just occur. I mean, it's cars. It's going to happen. And I love I love working on my cars. I'm glad I don't have to take it to the dealership. I'm glad I have time when I do have time. If I'm not working or doing other things and stuff like that, I do make time um, just to see what's what. I'm already doing a build on the Tahoe, uh, which I'm taking my time and doing. I got plenty of other parts to order. And then for the Porsche, I want to like actually like dedicate some time and like just to build it up. Like I can envision how I want the Porsche and all that right now. I just want to, you know, do little goodies. I'm going to just talk about that all later. But this car right here, this is like the daily. This is why I like carry my four wheeler and stuff with. So it kind of put me on the hold for a little bit. And I'm really thankful for that because it made me like, you know, see things like, you know, through. And it made me appreciate like just to go out driving more and all that. But hopefully after changing this gear selector, guys, this will solve our issue. I mean, we did a conductor plate. We did all that good little fluid we reset the codes i mean come on now I and mean, it just can't be rocket science so probably the night when i get home just taking that whole middle section out and getting to that uh gear selector and taking it out uh because i remember the night when i was driving all of a sudden the car just went like like limp mode i'm like what so i was stuck in first gear the whole time Mind you, I'm not able to change between winter and summer mode. And I'm not able to, like, you know, shift or go from park to drive like I supposed to. I'm not able to see it in the screen. So I asked my girl, because we were driving, like, did we spill something in this area or was something spilled before? I don't know. Uh, it possibly have been, but ain't no telling. The cylinder probably gone or something is gone out of that um that little uh module piece right there it, it it got a brain of itself it act like you don't know what uh gear it need to be in rather than part drive or whatever and so hopefully we get it straight guys hopefully we can get it straight and i hope y'all enjoy this video and uh like y'all stay tuned subscribe if y'all new and uh let's get to it because i'm about to you know get about my day I'm, i just want to drop this video I love making these type of videos and all that. It's really exciting. But, man, hopefully we get this um, car straight. If not, oof. Ooh, now nah, we will. We should. We should. But I ain't going to. I don't be thinking about it too much. I mean, it'd be on my mind. But then at the end of the day, I mean, it's just, you know, things just happen. And we're going to get through it and all that. You know, things take time. And we're just going to get through it. We just got to, you know, use our brain, use some common sense, and we're going to get through it. We're going to keep pushing. So, hope y'all enjoy it. I'll see y'all. Uh, peace out. And thank y'all for the support, man. I really appreciate it. And now uh, let's continue to grow. And uh, let me get back to work. <laughs>